Hello, my name is Marge Benham Hutchins, and uh, this lecture will be on nursing theory. So in this lecture, we will cover nursing theory, the nursing process, research, and we'll also have some example theories from nursing and non-nursing. So what exactly is a theory? A theory has been described as a thoughtful and rational explanation of the general nature of things. So an example of a theory would be Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You've probably already covered this in another class. And this theory basically says that we have to have some baseline things, physiological, safety, love, belonging, and esteem before we reach self-actualization. And that these things build upon one another. So if you don't have basic physiological needs, such as food and water, you are going to be more concerned about those until of than safety or security. But then once you get those things, you're then going to be start thinking about family, health, property, and so on. Love and belonging, esteem, these things all build on the uh, these other parts of this pyramid. So of course, some people have modified the basic human needs to include the need for a battery and Wi-Fi in order to even get to the point where we need physiological needs. So another example of a theory would be the diffusion of innovations. This is a theory that attempts to explain and predict what factors, what variables influence how and why new users adopt an innovation. And this theory has been applied in a variety of different settings. So when we're examining a theory, it's very important to look at some of the core theoretical concepts. So for this particular theory, the theory of diffusion of innovations, they have defined some specific concepts. One of them is diffusion and is defined as the process by which an innovation is communicated through certain channels over time through members of a social system. And they also have divided in innovation which is an idea, practice, or object that is perceived to be new. So a few examples of this could be a new procedure in a nursing, in, in your hospital, a new information technology, electronic health re records, computerized provider order entry. Even a smartphone could be considered a um, emerging technology or an innovation. So when examining a theory, it's important to look at any theoretical statements. So for the diffusion of innovations theory, a major statement is that individual innovation adoption decisions are influenced by the innovation adoption behaviors of other members of the social system. And this makes sense if you look around you, if you think about things like uh, computers and smartphones and uh, what you're gonna do next, uh, this one diagram here shows uh, dress, fashion. These are things that people are more likely to adopt once they've seen other people in their social system are adopting them. Another important component of the DOI, Diffusion of Innovations Theory, is that they have defined adopter categories. And so this includes innovators. These are people that require a shorter adoption period. They're more venturesome, ability to cope with uncertainty. These might be people you know are the first one to get the latest smartphone or a gadget that comes out. Early adopters, and this is what's really important. These people are the innovation opinion leaders. So they're the role models. They're often respected by their peers and are well-informed decision makers. These are the people that in a hospital environment, you have to be really aware of who these people are and to get them, make sure that they are on board with some type of practice change because they are going to influence the uh, behaviors of others. So, and then the early majority, they deliberate before adopting. And then the late majority waits a bit longer. They need more pressure from their peers. They're skeptical and they're cautious. And then you have the laggards. They're suspicious of innovations and they take a lengthy decision process. And you probably will recognize these categories in different people you know if you just think about some of the emerging technologies in our current environment. An interesting 
uh, component of this theory is that these adopter categories have been found to fall within a bell curve. So you have the, the early adopters and the innovators on one side, and then you have the majority of the people fall under the bell curve in the early, late majority, and then you have your laggards. And, the, and it shows that these people, the early, late majority, and the laggards are very strongly influenced by those early adopters. So you may be thinking, well, what does this theory have to do with healthcare or with nursing? Well, here's an application of the theory. And let's say that you are working in a hospital that is springing in barcode medication administration, or maybe they already have it, but they're changing it in some way. It might be new equipment, it might be new processes. So it's important that people that are implementing these changes are aware of the different adopter categories and that they target those early adopters, those opinion leaders, the people that will influence the adoption by others, and that they include these early adopters in the decision system selection, project team, super users. You may find that in some cases when new technology is rolled out, hospitals will have people that they may call super users or somebody that's on the floor that's also a nurse that can help you and guide you and understands your job, your workflow, and also understands the new technology and helps champion it. So we also have other types of theories, such as theories of aging, and these can fall under a few different categories. Uh, you'll have the biological theories of aging, and then there are sociological theories of aging. So you may be familiar with this a little bit, and that's that the biological theories uh, deal with cellular functioning, and that the changes to the cell are, um, and the ability to replicate is part of the aging process. And there's some major biological questions, such as what triggers, can it be stopped or modulated? Falling under the biological theories of aging are the non-stochastic theories, apologize for my pronunciation, that include programmed aging, genes, immunity, and then there are some theories that have to do with error, and that has to do with wear and tear, cross linkage, free radical, and, and these are theories that are biological but have to do with sort of the wearing out and errors that may occur in our biological processes. And then there are the sociological theories of aging are one of them is role theory and that's age norms where it's socially and culturally cultural expectations influence the behavior and that there are pre-established roles that influence aging. And the other has to do with activity, and that is that theory uh, attempts to predict and explain how individuals adjust age-related changes as looking at activity and productivity. So theories of aging that are um, biological or sociological can often be applied to the nursing to your nursing practice and how you would view caring for particular clients. A lot of the nursing theories that are available are based on some of these other types of theories and it is applied then by the developer of the theory to nursing. So for instance, we have Dorothy, Dorothea Oram's self-care theory and, and this is one that talks about the transitions in health that are directly influenced by the ability to provide self-care. And so when we can no longer provide care for ourselves is when we then become dependent on a health care provider. The Roy adaptation model, that describes the process of adapting to different situations. And Pepa's theory of interpersonal relations equates health problems with an opportunity to adopt better health practices and make positive life changes. So groups are going to be doing a um, theory presentation. And so I am going to use uh, Dr. Malai's transition theory as an example of how you could present information on theory. So here, her transition theory is based that a passage from one life phase, condition, or status to another. The transition refers to both the process and the outcome of a complex person and environment interactions. So Dr. Malai was born in Egypt and she completed her nursing degree at the University of Alexandria. She got an MS in nursing from UCLA in 1964. 
her MA in sociology in 1966. So this helps you understand that she's trained in nursing and sociology. And then her PhD was actually in medical psychology from UCLA in 1968. So that tells you a little bit more about her background and perhaps how and why she developed her theory. So in your group theory presentations, it's in, one of the things you're going to be dealing with is, is examining the foundations for the theory. So in the case of Dr. Malai's transition theory, uh, she drew upon psychology, anthropology, and sociology. So she looked at the stages in psychology, the stages of psychosocial development, and that each stage presents unique challenges. Everyone should transition through each stage for healthy development. That's Erickson. You probably remember that from some of your other studies. Anthropology. She examined ceremonies that celebrate an individual's transition from one status to another within a given society. And you're always, you're all probably familiar with these things. We have a variety of different uh, ceremonies and customs within our uh, families that do celebrate. It could be a marriage ceremony, it could be a funeral, uh, it could be birth of a baby, it could be a religious oriented like a baptism or confirmation, bar mitzvah. And she also looked at sociology and theory of family relations. So for Dr. Mali, she her major theoretical assumptions are that transitional transitions are complex and multidimensional. They're characterized by flow and movement over time. That transitions cause changes. That your people are vulnerable. That a vulnerability is present during, present during transitions. And she also views that nurses are primary caregivers during many transitions. So she also goes on in her major concepts to define the types of transitions, such as developmental transitions, that would be birth, death, adolescence, pregnancy, menopause, aging, health and illness transitions, that could be something like a diagnosis of a chronic illness, a hospital um, admission or discharge, recovery. And then there's situational transitions that also would have a tendency to influence health. And that could be migration, immigration, movement to a nursing home, and organizational transitions. This is changing environmental conditions that affect the patients and the healthcare workers. So for your presentation, you're going to be including those components and everything else that's in your rubric. Be sure to provide references and to find good quality information on your theorist and, and things that are written by the theorist or, and things that are written about the theorist.